Hey, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, where we can sit back, relax, take that Hello. midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and uh, this week, uh, video stuff. We got a lot of video stuff to talk about. Stick around for that, because our first story is going to be very important. I'm Vin. That is Jill. That is Pedro. Everyone watching this live on Twitch? Hi, look, we're waving at you. If you're listening, close Hello. your eyes and pretend <laughs> that people are waving at you, because we most certainly <laughs> are. <laughs> So we got a couple of things, uh, just a little bit of catch up because I saw that, Pedro, you've upgraded your Pine Time. If you don't know what a Pine Time is, it is a watch and Pedro loves watches. Yes. The boy has like a million watches everywhere. I have two. two. Yes. <laughs> I have an old dumb watch it's and I have like a- I was uh, saying that for comedic effect, but- <laughs> And they, uh, the cheapest uh, smartwatch currently on the market, outside of those really, really bad Fitbits. But uh, yeah, no, if you have a Pine Time, and a uh, very good job on this one, uh, Pine, the latest version of Infinitime, the operating system, I think it's 1.6, upgrade to that immediately if you haven't already. Because if you have one of these, chances are you realize that you couldn't have it paired up with your phone or tablet or PC for more than a couple of days before it just stopped syncing altogether. I thought it was just, you know, that it was shutting down for maybe power saving or something. No, it was crashing mm -hmm. in the background. The uh, Bluetooth uh, low energy thing was just straight up crashing. So that's been fixed. And I haven't had to repair this with my phone for over a week. Mm. Good job. It's a very good job. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> Jill, you went to a funeral. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this was sad. So the for those of you out there who don't know, the Ubuntu podcast is ending and it's supposed to be really ending this time. <laughs> they even had a, a farewell after party YouTube live stream on Thursday with uh, you know all the hosts. And, you know, I will just really miss the Ubuntu podcast with Popey, Wimpy and Mark. It, they were such a good trio on that show. <laughs> And, you know, I loved all the earlier hosts, too. I'd been been listening since they started. And it's actually one of the reasons I'm here on LWW. They inspired me to start podcasting. <laughs> so thank you, Wimpy and Popey and Mark, for all the wonderful years. And, and Laura. I love Laura. <laughs> That's good. I wish Aww. them all the best. So they'll, they'll definitely get up to something else in the future those lot are not going to stay um, yes. just chilled out too long yes <laughs> so to be fair wimpy does have his own youtube channel he does a lot of things there he sure <laughs> does wimpy's world there you go yep. go check that out it's on twitch we're going to talk about twitch in just a second so i had to miss out on all of the fun stuff that's been going on in kernel 514 because on mm -hmm. this box over here I can't just run regular, ordinary, sane kernels. I have to apply the real-time patch to make it unregular and completely mental. 5.15. Just out of curiosity, so 5.15 RC4 was out, and of course I headed over to the real-time patch set and say, okay, RT7, let's just go ahead and compile that. Now, the reason 5.14 wasn't, a long story, it wouldn't work with our RME interface that's format converter inside of this box. It just wouldn't initialize, and it was also an issue with some of the um, Fireface 400s, something with one of the TI chips, MMAP issues. I'm not going to bore you with that, but I'm here to report mm -hmm. 515 up and running on this box, so if it dies in a fire, it's because it's a release candidate, and I'll completely throw it under the bus, but it's working with the RME interface, and I'm happy to see that. But The main reason I got all this set up is because we're going to be testing, we're going to see how low you can go on an upcoming interfa mm -hmm. interfacing Linux with USB audio, with some of this new USB latency reducing black magic that's going to be in the kernel. So stay tuned for that. But right out of the gate, we got to throw a little bit of a PSA. <laughs> if you haven't yeah. heard, uh, <laughs> you m m might want to update your Twitch passwords and enable two-factor auto authentication because Twitch kind of went open source without anybody asking them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did. There's a 125 <laughs> gigabyte torrent that's listing the entirety of Twitch's source code. Uh, it's out there on the internet. Including the naughty bits. Mm. Uh, Creator yeah. payouts, all the information, their proprietary SDKs, their AWS integration stuff, uh, unreleased Steam competitor they were working on, codenamed Vapor, Vapor right? 
get the vapors. And um, <laughs> something that got like very interesting. Well, I thought it was very interesting is there's even a, um, there, uh, so in the comments from another site that they have some proprietary modifications to FFmpeg and to speed some things up that's floating around in there. Either. So watch out for that uh, FFmpeg <laughs> team. Uh, the initial leak doesn't appear to include any personal information, which is good, but strongly advised to go ahead and change your password. And if you don't have two-factor enabled, enable it right now. Stop what you're doing. And I mainly say that because according to the hacker that released this, this is just part one of the leak. So again, <laughs> update your passwords, <laughs> enable two-factor. Now, I don't know if it was um, cause and effect, but our stream key also updated. You might have noticed we were like a minute and a half, two minutes late. Like, oh, oh, uh, hmm probably the stream key so if you've been having problems going live today or possibly yesterday that could be the thing go ahead and uh, get your new stream key while you're changing your password just do it yeah <laughs> that's uh yeah no you yeah. really would if there was ever a time because uh, apparently there's salted uh passwords or encrypted passwords in the lake mm -hmm. they're not you know in plain text but they're there so yep yeah, uh, get on with it change it now <laughs> yeah i i changed mine yesterday first thing when i found out about it i had two factor for a long time as soon as they enabled that yeah <laughs> two factor all the things for safety and security seriously that that, that is the best psa yeah. two factor all the things <laughs> and it won't take much looking around uh, you can find your favorite twitch streamer all of the uh, financials have been were included in this leak and there's already websites to make it easy to search through them mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm guilty i feel bad about it but i had to check like a couple of people but most importantly it was a vanity check we didn't even make the list no <laughs> oh. oh i scrolled i spent a good few minutes just scrolling all the way down it's like okay let's hit the search bar no no okay. no oh. maybe in a couple of years fan <laughs> <laughs> gonna make it rain bezos box uh like and subscribe or whatever you do on twitch and it'll be brilliant but let's talk about pipe wire i promise this is going to be video heavy and uh Pipewire and fixing the Linux video capture stack. Well, at least so much in the sense that it's going to be working better with Pipewire. Now, you might have a webcam. Traditionally, your webcam is going to work with the 4L2. But uh, this whole blog post uh, is from known.org. All this is going to be in our show notes. It's telling about the video abilities of Pipewire because we talk about the audio stuff like a lot of people because it's kind of brilliant what Pipewire is doing. You know, it's coming down to we're getting something a little closer to like core audio on the Mac. It's it's the XKCD joke of the new standard. Now we have competed, but this this is going to be the one. This is everyone's kind of gotten around and like, okay. And it's going to be a drop in replacement for your jack, your pulse audios, also. Mm -hmm. And we're still going to be using also on the back end, but you get what I'm saying. But they also got to tackle the video. And um, mm -hmm. Pipewire was initially created to handle, you know, video with Wayland and that's what's original job in this brave new world Pipewire is planning to be you know it's going to be sitting between v4l2 and whatever application that you're going to be trying to run that's kind of the plan right now that's what they're going over you know saying hey you can target gstreamer or the Pipewire plugins and it'll get everything to the kernel module itself Peter you think that's a good idea I think it's dangerous and if I, I think that <laughs> This is uh, it's a very good idea, which is odd coming from, you know, the people who are making GNOME. But the, <laughs> I had to, I had to, I'm sorry. Well, I'm not sorry, <laughs> but I had to. The, uh, no, instead of giving the applications access to the device directly and just basically binding, no, you have that one stream and it's going to that one application. That's it. That's all you got to do. Um, this one, it just gives it access to the portal API and yeah, you can have as many applications using that one stream as possible. It's it's like a virtual cam that you can assign to multiple different applications. That that's a very good idea. That's pushing for abstraction mm -hmm. in all the things, not just for this bit of video, but also for audio and the way that it does and it passes everything along, be it Jack, Pulse Audio. It handles all of that. It yes, the the more I read into it, the more I want it. Please let 
I want this to be a thing by default everywhere. Please. <laughs> Go just install Fedora, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I will, but then it, it, it'd be both me and Jordan using Fedora for the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, it would, it, it's going to be so nice to be able to use our webcams and our high-end mirrorless or DSLR cameras in multiple applications at the same time. Woohoo! Because mm -hmm. there are times I could use that functionality. And, you know, I've been using and loving the uh, video for Linux to kernel API for years for content creation and even watching TV back in the day with the TV capture cards. <laughs> but it will be nice to have another option that is more robust. And I'm going to have fun testing library camera in the cheese application on Fedora because that's where they're initially going to do their testing. And um, the Pipewire community would like us Linux users to test their cameras to see which uh, ones work and which ones don't yet. So they need beta testers. <laughs> Come on, brave brothers and sisters out there. Go forth. File bug reports. Um, yes. <laughs> poke gonna, at it until it breaks and then tell the people how it broke. <laughs> I'm still stacking up the uh, cardboard boxes around um, camp. Uh, well, for uh, not broke, don't fix. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sally Ford. OBS Studio, we promised you video stuff and we're going to keep that train rolling. A uh, couple of updates and uh, some whoopsies. Yes, uh, three mm -hmm. whoopsies. In fact, uh, we talked about 27.1 last week. There has been three hot fixes in the meantime. Uh, it was, yeah, shortly after the first one was released, there was uh, an incorrect deployment on Windows that was uh, causing issues. So that was the first one. The second one was big. There were a couple of issues that they had to fix with that one. Nothing Linux specific. It was more of the YouTube integration that was a bit borked. And then uh, with the last hot fix, uh, 27.1.3 was actually a hotfix to the hotfix uh, mm -hmm. that uh, just some of the sources just didn't get the audio like they were supposed to. But that's good. That's good. That means that they cut the the, um, the issues and they managed to fix them. So that's good. Mm. Very nice. <laughs> I think it's kind of interesting. I'm like, just on a side note, there's a currently in the works for Pipewire. A new way to Jeez. access. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to walk and chew bubble gum right now. This is uh, okay. this, this is going to be difficult. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can copy that. A uh, virtual cam for OBS using Pipewire, and it basically means you're not going to have to because if you've set up virtual cam with OBS currently, if you followed our my little handy guide, you know how to do that. Go check that out. Yes, uh, you do have to enter your root password because it needs access to the V4L2 bit. But Pipewire wouldn't be the case. And this is a draft right now to expose everything uh, using Pipewire, which should also work in environments like flat packs and uh, maybe even snaps if you hate yourself. But yeah. Portal API. There's already a virtual camera running. <laughs> it, it's neat. I want to say stay tuned for that. Jill? Yeah. Well, I'm, I, you know, did this myself because of Ven's uh, handy guide there on how to get it working, the virtual cam plugin in OBS. And I've been using it um, and it works great, but it would be nice not to have to enter my root password every time I use it. That is a little annoying because <laughs> I'm going back and forth all the time in OBS. <laughs> so that I will be happy with. But other than that, Jeez. it works great, but it'll be nice to have a new option. <laughs> Stuff like this, you know, there, there's that part of me, very much a split personality right now, because there's mm -hmm. the part of me that helped just get into Linux 30 something years ago. It, that, that's very much a lot. I want to play with the new stuff, but there's also the, mm -hmm. like, you also want to be able to do the shows, don't you? Well, yes, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to adult. So I, I, I'm very jelly of people getting to play around with that right now. Um, what do we have up next? Oh, right. Uh, hmm. Live Video gamer capture. extreme? I don't <laughs> know. So, a capture card. I talked about one. It might have been last week, week before last, EVGA. Now, most capture cards, you rightfully can expect under Linux, especially USB. You plug them in, you're done. That's it. That's the end of the relationship, end of the transaction. You go to OBS, you go to cheese, whatever else. This is going to show up. 
But every now and then, every now and then, somebody decided to get creative, like AVR Media. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do something our way, and it's not going to be compatible with anything without drivers. One of these cards was the Live Gamer Extreme 2. That name alone would have never bought one. I'm like, that, that's just too much. This is too much. <laughs> yeah. Out of the box, that sounds like a card that might possibly blink. Mm, like, mm, no, mm -mm, don't need the RGB. It's got fancy designs. I'm looking at the pictures of the card right now. It's, it's, it's got fancy designs. <laughs> Pedro, you say that, and I had to investigate what this thing was. It's got a little place to clip out and insert new fancy designs. Yes. <laughs> In case you don't like the fire, hey, uh, you can uh, Pedro, <laughs> what, customize uh, it. Pedro, the fire might not be extreme enough for you. <laughs> you, could, you, you could be losing FPSs, bro. I mean, you need to change Yeah, no, it's, it's just a red stripe. The mm. one red stripe. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have a LG X2 user space driver. Thanks to Chris. And uh, go check it out. I mean, this is kind of like a proof, proof of concept. Plus is really all I can say. Chris decided that he had like to use his extreme too, so he made some drivers. And um it's not got a ton of features, but it can capture 1080p 60 right now. You gotta build a module. And you gotta mm -hmm. do a couple, you know, U dev rules, but that should get you on the way. Here's a little YouTube video. Let's go check that out. See, there it is. It's capturing uh some game. Never heard of it. What's that game? <laughs> something that looks like uh, very, very copyrightable. Isn't that right, Nintendo? Potato mash people? I don't know. <laughs> there's, a, there's a Pac-Man fighting. <laughs> so it's smash. It, it's smash. Yeah. It does it is. work. And it, it, I went and looked. It's uh, been on the market for about two years. And it's always fun to have something that you, maybe you've just written off. Maybe it's something you had. And like, oh, well, I guess it doesn't work. Whatever. Then you get that email a year later from Black Magic. And it's like, hey, wait, sorry, it's a different <laughs> different capture card. Um, something just starts working. <laughs> so this is good to see. This is good to see. All right, uh, Max. Yes, specifically the new Max, the ones that yeah. come with the fancy uh, arm designed SOCs, the M ones. Yes. Uh, there's been a particular group, uh, which uh, some of which you're probably familiar with if you've ever heard of Fail Overflow. Yeah, uh, they've been working on Azahi Linux, which is the uh, Linux implementation for the M1 Max, both the uh, Mac Mini, which I think it's the one that they're actually working on, and the um, the MacBook. So it's yeah, no, there's a lot of progress being done here because everything is new, um, except. Not really, because the more they look into it, the more they start to realize that it's basically Apple still following their um, way of doing things. Uh, it's 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 a bit of a slap in the face when you have Apple <laughs> with the one b having the better um, legacy compatibility by way of their hardware than every other cheap Android phone Pedro that basically Mateus, does its own thing you gotta and read requires that. specific drivers. You gotta read the label, Pedro. It says think different right on the front. Uh. Yeah, the think different as in, you know, standardize. I mean, they're the only ones standardizing on that, but then again, Sony is also a company that exists. The <laughs> I very much look forward to the videos of people playing with this as a desktop because that's one of the claims that they make. You can use it as a desktop, except you don't have any audio, you don't have any GPU acceleration, you don't get any USB mm -hmm. 3 or a Thunderbolt, <laughs> you only get USB 2. Uh, and the way that they actually... Uh, are doing the USB 2 implementation over the Type-C ports is interesting. It's very interesting. Mm. <laughs> I'll give them that. But yeah, it is It is crazy the amount of progress that they've done in such a short time. Very good job. <laughs> yeah, and um, like Pedro was saying, the, the hardware compatibility was a real surprise. And mm -hmm. in, in the article, Marken actually stated... Apple is unique in putting emphasis in keeping hardware interfaces compatible across SOC generations. The UART hardware in the M1 dates back to the original iPhone. 
Yeah. How crazy so, is that? So how's that for legacy? <laughs> I know. And the nice thing about this is that the Linux drivers written for the M1 SoC may be forward compatible with future versions, the M1X or the M2. So very awesome. And it's so nice to see Asahi Linux making such great progress. Very it is, and especially when you think about like, oh no, no GPU. They're that's what they're about to. They had to get the foundation down before they start going into this. But Mercon even points yeah. out, he's like, "Yo, this thing's so silly fast that you don't notice it doesn't have GPU acceleration for the most part." It's, nice. <laughs> so high praise for Apple Silicon, and they are going to be working on a to do list for an easier installer. You know, something that you can just plop on and start playing around with. But I think the big thing for me, the takeaway from this is getting power device management and frequency scaling for the mm-hmm. little M1 chip. Because now you don't have to keep it constantly plugged into the main. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Pretty neat. And uh, awesome. the uh, tweets that uh, from Alyssa Rosenzweig, I assume, uh, <laughs> uh, the tweets that she posted or last week, or yes, last week, uh, saying that Mesa builds unreasonably quick uh, on the M1 mm-hmm. in Linux. It's like, oh, so they're already building in hardware. Okay, cool. <laughs> this is why I want to play around with one. Um, what I'm, you know, uh, maybe it's always just been throughout history, or at least my history, I've always been fascinated in alternate architectures, you know, like Risk or anything like that. You know, IBM, like, give, give me a power eight or something, man. I'd, I'd be happy with that if I didn't, you know, if I could afford to live after buying the motherboard. <laughs> uh, Pine, make a, uh, like, stupid high end, very high performance drop in replacement motherboard for the Pinebook Pro. I would like to spend up to 400 currency units on one of those. This <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> this is interesting. I mean, with the M1, what I want to see, because what they have right now, fanless design. Okay, what are you going to be putting in the Mac Pro? Well, I, we're mm-hmm. going to see something that is going to have active cooling on it. It's probably going to be something, you know, upwards of 70 cores on it. And what does this chip look like when it's just completely unhinged? <laughs> 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 Yeah, it, it, it right now it needs uh, more because, yes, the, it was the first implementation. So both the mini and the uh, MacBook, they get a bit toasty mm-hmm. on accounts of uh, it's all passively cooled. So, yeah, once you actually start doing work on it, it gets hot. It gets real hot. <laughs> <laughs> so, everyone, it's been a few weeks since we get to break out. Our favorite uh, Microsoft loves Linux. Yes. <laughs> Microsoft loves Linux. <laughs> yeah. So I found this article and went, wow, okay. So Microsoft Office 2021 now includes better support for LibreOffice files. Yes, everyone, you heard that right. Because it is usually the other way around. <laughs> so Office now has support for the open document format ODF 1.3. And it will no longer save in the ODF 1.2 format, but can open them as well as older versions, of course. And this is wonderful news, especially, you know, I think this is especially prompted because of our pandemic world of governments and businesses and people switching to free and open source standards. Of course, that move started before the pandemic, but it was definitely spurred by the pandemic. So there, we, we need better support for the free option. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And it's really actually about time that Microsoft Office has support for the ODF 1.3 format because it came out in January of 2020. But I was thinking about that. And honestly, this is actually really fast for Microsoft's timeline. They were they were uh, really eager to make make this update. So and that shows actually how important this update really is to, you know. All of us. <laughs> or it just happened to coincide with the uh, the timelines like, we need a new Office version to go along with Windows 11. So oh, yeah. what can we add to make this look like? Oh, there we go. ODF 1.3. <laughs> yeah. And lots of people are using uh, LibreOffice on their Azure platform. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> See, I use Google Docs like a normal person who hates privacy. So <laughs> that's all I'm worried about. Yeah, no. Uh, what what I 
one of the things that annoys me greatly is once you do a like a fresh install of Office, the first time you open Word or Excel, it asks you, do you want to use the paid for open XML documents mm. or the actual open standard documents? But hey, you know, I guess they got to justify the, how, how much is it? It's like 60 or $70 for the home and student edition that Pedro just comes with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. files were good enough for my grandpappy, and they should be good enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> you kids with your fancy uh, no. formatting. Open XML annoys me. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Notepad. Notepad plus plus. That's all I needed. I, uh, of course, now I use G. I've been using G Edit for years, honestly. Yeah. Heathen and Netit and Joe. <laughs> G Edit's my go-to ever and since uh, several, many, many years ago. I, I copy pasted some PHP in there. I'm like, oh, you do syntax highlighting? All right, we're good. Um, but that that's good to see compatibility because you got to think uh, Office is going to turn into a web app like everything else. Mm-hmm. I mean, more yeah. so. Windows is already yeah. uh, making yeah. progress into that. Windows so, is a surface. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people are terrified of like Windows. Windows 11 is so bad. Linus, not that Linus, is switching to Linux. <laughs> yes. We're not, we're actually not making that one up. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> correct. <laughs> the, uh, Linus tech tips. He, he's trying to play it off like some competition. No, no, just, I'm just scared of Windows 11. <laughs> That's all it is. It's like, okay, let's see if we can actually do this and not have to use Windows 11. Tune in for that dumpster yeah. fire. So uh, if you want to help out with this, our dumpster fire, you can do that by supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, select membership level, ship level. Oh, do I have to bleep that out? Probably not. Um, <laughs> we got a bunch to choose from. Up to and including a special show we do on Saturdays. Uh, we provide pre pre super shows. And if you're wondering about what we're watching and just like non Linuxy stuff, yeah, there's still some Linuxy stuff in there, but it's technology, TV, film. Uh, that's pre pre super shows. And we also have access to the Uncut series, which is the full, like this show. It's going to be about 45 minutes. The long version is going to be closer to two hours. The show we do at Linux Teamcast Weekly on Saturdays, that's almost guaranteed four hours of dedicated background noise. For your viewing or listening pleasure. We got anything else? Oh, we got Discords, Pedro. You ever heard about Discord? I, I <laughs> wait, hey, hang on. We, we have Discord. Discord. You tell me this now, Pedro. After all this time, <laughs> see, I was setting up a softball for Pedro Mateus to go. Pedro, have you heard about Discord? And Pedro should have said, <laughs> No, <laughs> no. Okay, I'll straight. If, if I was going to make a joke that we make pretty often, <laughs> hey, have you heard about this? We have a Discord, Pedro. <laughs> Yes, yes, we do. Uh, we have Jeez. Discord. And- okay, you should have just said, <laughs> have you heard about Matrix? Entire time. Uh-huh. That's Matrix works well. <laughs> trying to... <laughs> Pedro, Pedro I'm can- deliberately not touching that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he's unable to talk right now. He's covered in so many softballs. Um, <laughs> for for Mumble Long Trump. <laughs> so, yes, uh, but... Our Discord is, uh, we have live channel, it's wide open, it's bridged with Twitch, it's bridged with our IRC channel. Just go to our live tab on our web zone, linuxteamcast.com, get all that information. You can uh, hop in it if you're a Twitch sub or if you're on Patreon. You can do that as well. We thank you for your support and uh, no mattress ads, guaranteed. (laughs) All right, we got And we need to, (laughs) yeah, and we need to thank two people. We uh, down incognito. And gave us an eighth month resub on Twitch, and Don M gave us a twelve month resub. Yay! Thank you very well, thank much. You very much. Do, you, both do of you. you hear that Twitch leaks? We're coming for you. We're going to actually make the chart one day, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> one day, one day, <laughs> maybe in time for the next leak. Yeah. Hey, we got to look at that. Also, merch. We get shirts. Goodbye, an LWDW shirt. Send me a picture. Yay. I'll put it on the show. Guaranteed. All right. <laughs> now, I want you to inhale. The majesty. <laughs> that is a slice of pie. Oh, we got coming up. It's oh, a perfume? Perfume. Vanilla? Mm. Did they Vanilla? actually release? Yeah. <laughs> hmm? Okay. Okay. <laughs> if it's I'm a, a vanilla cream fa- pie, <laughs> I, I'm all there. I, I'd like that. <laughs> so. See, the problem is, is that better not be toxic or even remotely lethal because both of you sounded like you try to taste it a little bit. 
Uh, yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't put that past me now. No, <laughs> not even. <laughs> not even oh. a little bit. I'd just be well, I love the smell of vanilla. And I would enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> I take swigs out of vinegar bottles, so yeah. <laughs> Have you heard about this hot new game called Flappy Bird? <laughs> oh, uh, wasn't that banned in like a bunch of different places because it was actually yeah. it was actually cutting into people's productivity? <laughs> was that before or after the developer pulled it from the store because he was worried about people playing it too much? And people were selling iPhones preloaded with Flappy Bird <laughs> for a lot of money. <laughs> That was, yeah, no, that was, uh, Flappy Bird has had a bit of a sordid history, but, well, uh, I guess we could add a bit more uh, sordidness to it by just letting the AI learn how to play it. And this isn't the first one that I've seen, the first person that I've seen doing this, uh, Code Bullet uh, on YouTube. He did this a couple of years ago, and he also used the uh, the neat algorithm to go generationally um, and basically just let the AI figure out how to play Flappy Bird. Of course, it's not the actual Flappy Bird. It's a clone made specifically for you to feed the algorithm into. Kind of, you know, has to be, but it's not a very complicated game, to be fair. <laughs> and, um, yeah, this one is, uh, I don't I don't know if Code Bullet actually ever released the source to his uh, implementation of this, but this one is available. It's from Dr. Maud, and it's available on GitHub, so... If you are curious about the uh, the neat algorithm and how AI learns how to do things generationally, that there you go. Have that. <laughs> Very nice. Well, I love the display a disclaimer at the bottom of the website. The code hasn't been cleaned up, tested, optimized, or intended to be shared at all. That's honestly why we are telling our Linux game cast LWW viewers about it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's not supposed to be shared at all. So, and it has an interesting name for the XML final file that I probably that can't say. That doesn't say, say on what the you air. think it does, Jill. Get your mind yeah. together. That's no. PLM. <laughs> Man, you would expect a disclaimer like that to be on the end of a Microsoft release, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So. Coming up next is uh, everyone has a Raspberry Pi. It's like the little cheap microphones we were talking about. Look around your house long enough, you'll find a Raspberry something. I mean, it's just there. Um, I, I think, well, Pedro, do you use yours for anything? Uh, yes. I have finished uh, three uh, PSP games on the uh, Pi Boy DMG. <laughs> you got a... Nice. And uh, let's see. I have another one. Um this was is an A, uh -huh. uh, the three A, uh, and I'm not entirely sure what to do with this. One. <laughs> so it, yeah. it, it's kind of there. It has a screen, seven twenty by seven twenty screen. It, that, that's really neat. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> and Joel, you get several buys, and I'm sure you plug them in, put different operating systems on them, play around with them. Absolutely, right? right. Yeah, my Pi four hundred has Twister OS on it at the moment. <laughs> and the the two pies that I, I have a B in this house somewhere. I don't know where it's at, but I know it. I found the receipt for it. Uh, my Pi Zero W is genuinely in a box, not doing anything. And uh, I've turned a Raspberry Aww. Pi 4 8 gig into a butter robot that powers the stream deck. So uh, nice. I don't know who wins on the least use out of a pie. Oh, I, I use them a lot. So. Yeah, I think it's kind of a tie. <laughs> Me and Pedro are kind of... Uh, we use our pies yeah, a lot. No, it's like, uh, <laughs> this one, I think, is probably since I bought it, I haven't really used it. I've done several things with it for a whole day. Mm -hmm. And then now it's in a 3D printed case with a... Um, sorry, <laughs> notifications just went <laughs> off and every device around me lit up. It's like, what? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the um, the square screen, that's that's a really neat bit. But I, I turn it on just to look at the screen because 720 by 720 in this teeny tiny, I think it's like Crisp. five inches. It's, it's good. I guess I should say, Pedro does log into my oh. Pi twice a week. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, one of my Pies is I used as a Pi hole um, over my network, which is a really nice uh, way to utilize the Pi. Um, and I also have one that we've used at uh, the Southern California Linux Expo 
as a photo booth to take pictures at our Linux Chicks at Light booth. That was awesome, man. And you guys taped a camera yeah. to it and threw it at people's heads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we even had a little little printer that printed out mini pictures just like you were in a pie booth. So I hear a, a some pie, people, a picture booth. <laughs> some people like to run desktops on their pies. Yes. So this is exciting news. It looks like System 76's Ubuntu based Pop OS is coming to the Raspberry Pi and ARM 64 with their 21.10 impish injury release in October. And this comes to us uh, from System76 lead developer Jeremy Soller posted a photo on his Twitter with a screenshot of the Pop OS terminal with the NeoFetch command, which was running on his Raspberry Pi 400. <laughs> Awesome. And he posted the link to the ARM64 architecture packages for Pop OS 21, 21.10. So, yeah, it, it's it's real and it's coming. And I'm looking forward to putting that on my Raspberry Pi 400. <laughs> to, <laughs> to seeing how uh, GNOME is uh, working on with uh, Pop Why? OS integration. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I was kind of curious. I, I really was because I bought the... Um, you know, the Pi 4 8 gig version. I even played around with like overclocking and stuff like that. And of course I had to see what the desktop experience was, even though it lives its life as a headless box in the rack down here on a shelf. Mm. Had to find out. I had to see where it was because it had been since I played with a Raspberry Pi P since I went, oh no, that's kind of rough. But it in, in those days it was like, but it's launching. You know, <laughs> it was the excitement of like, ooh, what's to come in the future? Yeah. And I loaded it uh, Raspbian, so that was running probably XFC. Um, it loaded up, and I'm like, oh, you know what? Like, maybe then I launched Firefox. I thought I did. I wasn't sure, and I had to wait a minute. Then it came up. I'm like, okay, that's neat. And, of course, I tried to play some 1080p YouTube videos on the quad core with the 8 gigs of RAM. Mm. It could kind of, sort of, almost keep up with 1080p video on YouTube. So, uh, wh what I'm getting around to is, like, the desktop experience, even on the biggest the baddest pie currently available um and oh here's another hardware revision thing you might not know because you know the like the one in jill's your pi 400 is a slightly faster yeah. soc yeah it's overclocked but <laughs> they, that's also the soc that has been rev bumped for raspberry pi 4s now so if you buy a new raspberry pi 4 it's got the same soc oh. as your pi 400 yeah they didn't yes. tell anybody that so oh um, Nice. <laughs> but the desktop experience on a Raspberry 4 is, I'd call it serviceable. Like in a pinch, it's better than nothing. Maybe if I had to get something done more than like pressing is, I'd rather have my Android tablet, my keyboard and gerbil. But <laughs> Pedro, I think like putting it on something like maybe a Pinebook. I don't, you have a Pinebook. Does, does that have more oomph than a Pi? Significantly. Um, mm -hmm. I half didn't expect it to, but after testing Doom... Uh, on the Pi 4 and Doom on the Pinebook Pro. Yes, the Pinebook Pro will actually hold 60 FPS if you cut it down to low. You have to play on low and you're barely hitting 30 on the Raspberry Pi 4. So, mm. yeah. Mm. <laughs> Significantly. Still. But my question mm. was, um, running GNOME on a Pi? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a Pi 400. It still seems counterproductive. You're mm. using the entire resource uh, pool of the Pi f for the well, desktop environment. I don't know. Raspbian is decent. <laughs> I, I when I was uh, figuring out how to set up uh, the Pi with like the um, SSD and all that fun stuff, and getting it to boot from that, I was trying a couple of distributions live on stream, and one of them was Ubuntu. And Ubuntu is heavy on that Pi. I mean, like startup time, everything else. Maybe somebody wants like a more like out of the box experience, and I'm assuming Pop's going to be a little bit lighter than the old Puntos. Yeah, I, I think that they'll have some optimizations that'll help a lot, and being able to use it in uh, tiling window, the the tiling manager mode Just it would be use an yeah. actual tiling window manager don't use <laughs> i3 <no>. <laughs> <Here's> <laughs> the thing. maybe 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 system 76 is working on some raspberry pi cases with wood paneling mm -hmm. yes <laughs> very good and some of Those them maybe dyed blue or yeah. or a red and you see with well, a raspberry i want a pink one raspberry pi 4 <laughs> the uh like permanently drilled out back plate <laughs> would make sense Yes, I am. Yeah? No. <laughs> you just create like a mini Telio uh, case and 
you just fit a Raspberry Pi in there. It's like, there you go. Done. Yeah. Those would sell. <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking. Those would sell. But then they got to make a oh, little keyboard. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Hey, everyone. We got to get out of here. We're running short on time. If you'd like to get a hold to us, uh, best way to do that is head over to LinuxTeamCast.com. We got a contact button. Pick LWDW from the drop down menu. Share with us if you're working on a project or anything like that. Uh, if you'd like, come on the show. Would love to talk to you if you're a developer. And um, yeah, thoughts, hints, allegations, things better left unsaid. Or you leave a comment on the YouTubes. Uh, I'm going to give you a pro tip like leaving a comment on the uh, library, the Odyssey type thing. Good luck. That gets checked like maybe once every two or three months. So just keep that in mind. But until then, we're going to roll some credits because uh, we <laughs> want to thank each and every one of you. Do I have a credits button? Yeah, I do. Look at that. I'm going to be doing things. Multitasking. <laughs> Pedro, I think you're on to something. I think I think having a little mini filio case with a Raspberry Pi in it yeah. is a great idea. <laughs> no, it, it's basically, oh, it's like a novelty thing because, oh, it's a teeny yeah. tiny version of the big desktops that they sell. But no, it's an actual yeah. case for a Raspberry Pi. That would be awesome. That would actually be really, really awesome. Just, you know, don't price it like the Thalia. Please. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't want to pay 200 pounds for a Raspberry Pi case. <laughs> Or, or they could put, put the pie in their new new uh, upcoming launch keyboard, not the one they have out now, but the one coming up. Like an <laughs> all-in-one cool. type of situation with the keyboard? I wouldn't yeah. be opposed to that either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. I think this is it. Have a great rest of your week. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, Bye, everyone. <laughs>